Okay, welcome. I'm uh, Bernardo Cortese, an Italian physician and interventional cardiologist. Welcome everybody to Radcliffe. Today I'm going to tell you which is, uh, you know, which are the most impactful trials that have been presented so far at Europe PCR this year and that they will probably change our practice uh, for, for the patients. The first trial that I would like to uh, enlighten today is the landmark trial. And in this trial, uh, there was the first comparison of a new generation balloon expandable valve for TAVR. It's a MyVal uh, from India. And it was compared in a double randomization to uh, current uh, state of the art uh, balloon expandable or self expandable valves. And this trial, which enrolled uh, more than 700 patients uh, with an average age of 80 years, had a low surgical risk. Uh, this new valve uh, actually did not uh, uh, um, outperform the other two valves because the um, known inferiority was met. Actually, I have to say that uh, uh, one limitation of this trial is that the primary endpoint is a quite busy uh, co-primary endpoint with several items, so it's not only mortality plus rehospitalization, uh, but uh, there is also the need for pacemaker, the bleedings, uh, all of that. So the global rate at one year of the primary endpoint is uh, more than 20%, but this you know, known inferiority has been met between this new generation valve and the state-of-the-art valves, uh, again, I repeat, balloon expandable and self-expandable valves. Another trial that I would like to underline is a trial that actually led to uh, some disappointing results. Uh, this is the Ability uh, Global Trial. So in this trial, uh, the goal was to test a new drug eluting stent, uh, which has also some uh, drug or balloon activity. This is the uh, um, albuminous drug eluting stent. So in this stent, uh, after crimping the stent to the balloon, there is a spray coating with serolimus. So the idea is to uh, create a mixed uh, a device which could be very interesting in a high-risk population like the diabetic one. So uh, in this trial, uh, with a clinical endpoint, the, the goal was to meet a known inferiority versus one of the most widely used drug of the stand, which is uh, Zions, in this uh, high-risk population, high-risk for events, which is the diabetic population. But unfortunately, the primary endpoint of TLF at one year uh, uh, did show a very low uh, event rates in the Zions group versus the, the albuminous group, and so known inferiority was not met. Actually, the events were very low also in the albuminous group, but again, the trial was negative from this point of view. There will be a longer follow-up, of course. There will be sub-analysis that will teach us and will let us know uh, why uh, the, these results were so disappointing. So now let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, discuss about drug or balloons, actually. You know, it's uh, one of the, mo the hottest topics today. Um, I'm going to tell you about a cage-free two trial. This is a Chinese trial, very well done. Uh, they enrolled uh, uh, 1,900 patients, but the presentation that was done yesterday, actually, uh, was on the uh, 900 patients treated uh, with uh, the, this paclitaxel called the balloon. And uh, these were ACS patients. And the goal uh, of this uh, uh, study was to see if in these ACS patients uh, there was uh, any role for a reduction in the dual antibiotic therapy with the drug or the balloon. So the randomization wa was between 12 months dual antibiotic therapy versus one month. And after that, dropping aspirin like it is, you know, the, it's the current fashion now, and go on with the Ticagra. Uh, interesting, after one year, there was uh, uh, no significant differences in, the, in terms of NACE in the two groups. Uh, MACE were the same, and there was uh, a reduction in BARC type 3 to 5 bleedings uh, with a single uh, antiplatelet therapy after one month with Ticagra. So interesting data. Uh, we will get more information in the high bleeding risk patients with picoleto 4 study, which uh, is a role in patients at high bleeding risk or more than 75 year old uh, uh, with a single antibiotic therapy, a randomized versus a dual antibiotic therapy. And the last study that I would like to underline is uh, a study from our group. It is picoleto 6 
uh, among the hot topic of drug coated balloons, there is another hot topic. Is it uh, better to use a paclitaxel coated balloon or a sirolimus coated balloon? So we collected data from 13 centers, 270 patients, and we just presented the preliminary results, not the definitive one. And these preliminary results uh, are showing that from the angiographic standpoint, there is a small advantage by paclitaxel coated balloons versus sirolimus coated balloon, but it is not significant. Paclitaxel coated balloon has a late lumen loss of minus 0.02 versus 0.12, in the sirolimus coated balloon, which is still a good one. And a, a good information and new information that we have now, and it's actually a confirmation of other uh, uh, data that we gathered from other studies, is that we have lumen gain more with paclitaxel in uh, 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 almost 60% of the cases, but we have also some lumen gain in 40% of the cases treated with uh, a sirolimus coated balloon. Primary point of this study is physiology. All of the patients underwent MUFR, and interesting, the delta in MUFR between the end of PCI and the angiographic follow-up did not significantly differ between these two types of serolimus coated balloon and these five types of paglitaxel coated balloon.